to learn economia uh, in this video uh, we will be looking at uh, a very 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 recent concept uh, that is gender development index actually the concept is uh, very it is gaining importance especially in a scenario of um, uh, giving importance to women empowerment uh, feminism etc and all so this gender development index or gender uh, and gender equality index and all uh, actually look into the uh, uh, development perspective from a gender point of view okay having said so uh, we will be looking at uh, the gender development index in detail in this video so let's do that gender related development index is considered to be uh, a measure of gender equality so it uh, looks at whether there exists any kind of gender inequality or gender equality in the nations so uh, this index it uh, along with the gender empowerment measure uh, was introduced in 1995 in the human development report uh, of the united nations development program okay now uh, the aim of these kinds of measurement uh, was to add a gender sensitive dimension to the human development index we have already discussed the human development index its constituents its components uh, and all uh, if you haven't watched uh, the video which discusses uh, the human development index please go and watch that video because in that particular video we have already covered the new method of uh, um, measuring the human development index as well as all the old method of doing that so you will be able to make a comparison between the old and new methods so you will be um, getting a better understanding regarding the human development index if you watch that video and you will be able to uh, understand how the uh, new um, new method of human development index or new measure of human development index is considered to be an added advantage over the old method so uh if you haven't watched that video please go and watch it because uh, after watching that video if you come again and watch this video you will be getting a very much better understanding of this uh, gender related development index as well okay so uh, coming back to the gender development index uh, the first measurement uh, that was created by the uh, um, the uh, uh, united nation development program related to the gender index was uh, the gender related development index so this was the first attempt made by the united nations development program to give a gender perspective to the human development index okay so this is uh, or this was actually created to rival the traditional or general income based measures of development uh, such as the uh, gross domestic product or the gross national product we know uh, we know that uh, when we say about growth and all we are mainly concerned about the gdp of the country or gnp of the country or the national income of the country so we uh, so in order to give a gender dimension or the gender sensitive dimension to uh, the uh, growth aspect or to the development aspect it has gone for uh, the un uh, undp has gone for the gender related development index okay now um, this so we could say that uh, this gender development index is considered uh, is considered to be a gender sensitive extension of the hdi actually we know hdi hdi looks at three components and uh, but uh, this is gender related development index is something that is considered to be an improvement over the human development index in the sense that it is giving a gender dimension to human development index so it actually addresses the gender gap with respect to life expectancy education and income we have seen that uh, the human development index looks at uh, life expectancy education and the standard of living so having said so um, by looking at the differences or gender gaps in these indicators or these uh, components of uh, human development index it gives a gender um, gender perspective or gender sensitive dimension to human development index so we could see that it actually the uh, gdi it actually uses the inequality aversion penalty which creates a human uh, development score penalty for the gender gaps in any of the categories of human development index which include life expectancy lit adult lit literacy school enrollment and logarithmic transformations of personal income okay or per capita income uh, not personal actually it is per capita income so in terms of uh, life expectancy uh, we know that the gdi assumes that the women live uh, an average of 5 years or longer than men 
here too there is a difference between men and women additionally if you look at the case of income you could see that the gdi considers income gaps in terms of the actual earned income and also gdi cannot be used independently from the human development index score so that it cannot be used as its own, as a as a own indicator of gender gap so only after computing the human development index score you will be able to compute the uh, this gender development index score so this cannot this doesn't have uh, this gender development index doesn't have an um, independent existence or well, it actually depend upon the human development index because it is derived out of human development index uh, we could say that it is almost same as a human development index but the difference is that here in the case of gender development index we could understand the difference between men and women so that we will be able to understand the difference between or the gap which exists between the male and females of a particular nation or of the world now only the gap between the hdi and gdp can actually be accurately considered the hdi on its on is not an independent measure of gender gap okay uh, now in in the year since the creation uh, since its creation in 1995 and all you, you can see that there were much debates there were so much of debates uh, which have arisen surrounding the reliability and usefulness of this gender development index so um, as a result what they have done is that many many Uh, development economists and all they have gone for adequate comparison between different nations in uh, promoting the gender sensitive development and also you could see that hdi is particularly criticized uh, criticized especially on the basis of um, uh, we we have already seen that it, it is actually not a independent measure right so uh, in fact it is intended to be interpreted in that way because it can it can only be used in combination with the scores of the human development index but it doesn't have its own independent existence but and also we could see that uh, the data which is needed to calculate this um, here, gender development index is also uh, uh, it is not that available or it is not readily available in many of the countries making the measure very hard to calculate uniformly and internationally as a result we could see that comparison is also that much reliable so uh, there are also very regarding the combinations of uh, so many developmental influences in one measurement could result in muddled result and which perhaps um uh, results in uh, hiding many of the uh, fact uh, many, many of the uh, facts uh, that has that has many implication that have got many implications upon uh, human development index or uh, gender development index so as a result uh, this gender development index has been got uh, criticism from diverse angles and it has been criticized by various development economists as well now uh, this uh, gender development index actually measures the gender gap in human development achievements by accounting for disparities between men and women in three all uh, basic dimensions of human development we have um, we have already discussed that because uh, 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 when human development look Uh, look uh, human development index looks into uh, the knowledge standard of living uh, life expectancy health etc and all in each of these components the gender development index look into the men uh, men women disparities okay and this gender development index is considered to be the ratio of hdis calculated separately for males and females using the same methodology as in the case of hdi but the difference is that here we calculate separately for males and females now it is a direct measure of gender gap showing the female hdi as a percentage of the male hdi and the Uh, gdi is calculated for 167 countries and the in this case the countries are grouped into five categories based on their absolute deviation from the gender parity in hdi values and this means that the grouping actually takes equally into consideration the gender gaps favoring males as well as uh, the one favoring females okay now the gender development index uh, it actually shows how much women are lagging behind their male counterparts and how much women need to catch up with each dimension of human development so uh, this is very much important and these can be used for policy formulation so as to equip the Uh, cat, that category which is lagging behind okay if, if it is men we can make policies and uh, we can implement programs and policies uh, uh, so as to equip women to come forward and if it is if you can see that men is lagging behind then you can um, make adequate policy measures and all in order to uh, uh, make we uh, in order to make men, men come forward and catch up with women so whatever is the criteria or whatever is the situation uh, this can be 
solve by implementing and or going for di different and adequate uh, sets of policies so as to equip uh, that category which is lagging behind so as to ensure that there exists a gender equality. So as a result, we could see that uh, this particular measure or the gender development index is a measure which is useful, useful for understanding the real gender gap in human development achievements. And this is considered to be informative of designing policy tools in order to close this gap. So here we could see that as in the case of the human development index, uh, which measure in or which take into consideration life expectancy, uh, education and standard of living here we have taken the three the, the all, all the three indicators uh, for both male and female separately in order to calculate the gender development index so that means that the human development index of female and in human development index of male are taken uh, separately uh, and the ratio of this these two indicators is taken to uh, come into the gender development index Okay. Now uh, we have to understand, uh, we have already discussed this, but just uh, going for a revision, you can understand the, um, understand in detail the uh, measures or the components of GDI. Okay. Now this GDI actually differentiates, difference, it actually takes into consideration the differences in male-female achievements in uh, the different categories or components of human development that is health, education and uh, standard of living here. Uh, gender disaggregated data is uh, actually uh, taken into consideration. The health dimension is captured by female and male life expectancy at birth. Education, we have for education, we have two indicators for both male and female that is expected years of schooling for children, both um, for both male and female, and uh, uh, actually expected years of schooling for children. Uh, and uh, we look into the mean, uh, mean data of or the mean uh, figure of the mean years of schooling for the adults uh, which uh, adults who 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 are between uh, who are between 25 and more okay now um, you also take into consideration the economic resources of both female and male in order to uh, understand their earned income or standard of living now here uh, the um, methodology followed here is a gdi is a ratio of female hdi to male hdi so in order to calculate that, what we do is that HDA is first calculated separately for males and females. Uh, then we uh, using the same goalposts as in the case of HD, HDI, uh, we actually transform the indicators uh, by using a scale which lie between 0 and 1. The only exception here is that life expectancy at birth uh, where the goalposts are adjusted because you know that uh, for men and women, there is some kind of uh, difference in the case of life expectancy. So this is to reflect the empirical finding that on average women have a biological advantage over men. Uh, so we could say that women only men uh, and they uh, they are expected to ha have a uh, have a minimum or have an average um, difference between five years or a average difference of five years. So they could, we could see that uh, uh, women live longer than men and the gap is uh, about five years. Okay. Now uh, the calculation is that uh, with respect to income component or standard of living component, the estimated or earned income is calculated for based, uh, based on female income and male shares of the population. And female male shares of economically active population, their ratio of female male wages in all the sectors, their GNI per capita, um, uh, etc. are taken into consideration. Now, uh, the income component of GDI is actually taken as a proxy to command over the economic resources and this component captures the income gaps in a way which is similar to the focus of gender gaps in other HDI countries. Uh, and it's important to know that uh, a number of countries do not have sex disaggregated wage data. So in this case, it's very important to ask the question, how do you estimate the sex disaggregated GNI per capita uh, for these kinds of countries? So we could see that uh, by looking at the previous data and or empirical evidences and all, we could see that the global average female to male wage ratio across all the sectors is considered to be uh, 0.5 since 2018. So the global average is used to estimate the wage ratio for countries with the missing sex disaggregated wage data. Uh, 
in this case we could recognize the limitations in assuming that the way global average applies to all the countries with the missing wage data as well so the international labor organization is actually working to improve the availability of sex disaggregated wage statistics uh, it's a very important to ask a question what is the advantage of grouping countries into five gda groups uh, instead of ranking them according to the absolute de uh, deviation from the parity so in this case we can answer this question by telling that estimating the male female hds for all the countries actually relies on uh, many approximations uh, many calculations many measurements etc et such as assuming wage ratio as uh, uh, of uh, as 0.8 for many of the countries so this is because the estimated hdi need not be interpreted with caution need to be interpreted with caution okay so as a result uh, economists prefer to uh, prefer not to rank the countries based on these kinds of approximated hdis instead what they do is that uh, they group the countries into five H gdi groups by absolute uh, deviation from gender parity in hdi values group 1 indicates the countries which have high equality in hdi achievements between men and women uh, absolute deviation less than 2.5 percent the group 2 has medium high equality in hdi achievements between men and women absolute deviation between 2.5 percent and 5 percent uh, coming to group 3 it has a medium equality in hdi achievements between men and women absolute deviation between 5 percent and 7.5 percent coming to group 4 we could have a medium to low equality in hdi achievements between men and women absolute deviation is uh, between uh, 7.5 percent and 10 percent and uh, the final one is group 5 and this has a low equality in hdi achievements between men and women and the absolute deviation from gender parity greater than 10 percent so this is the criteria used by the uh, united nation development program in, in order to calculate their gdi okay so coming to the policy relevance of the gdi we have already discussed that uh, the, the existing data or empirical evidence can be used as a tool or a guide to formulate policy so as to arrive, so as to achieve the gender equality in a country so as to uh, ensure that there exists gender development uh, in uh, countries in uh, without any kind of gender disparity okay the gd actually helps in uh, better understanding of the gender gap in human development achievement as a result it provides some kind of insights into gender disparities in achieving three basic capabilities uh, which we have taken into consideration in measuring gender development index so, so using this as a tool we can go for uh, designing and monitoring policies in order to close this gap so that's all about gender development index thank you for watching this video please like share and subscribe this channel for more recent videos or more um, recent update in the arena of economics especially when it comes to development economics and all okay thank you